Well, it's August, and August has oddly become known as the month that represents the beginning of the fall season. Oddly, because of course fall doesn't officially begin until late September, but August has come to be associated with fall, I think, for a couple of reasons. One is that schools, especially public schools here in the United States, tend to begin their fall semester in August now. And another is one of the most anticipated times of the year, starting August 22nd to be exact this year, the time when Starbucks begins to sell its pumpkin spice latte. And while pumpkin spice latte season is just 21 years old this year, the spices themselves go back much further and have played significant roles in human history that deserve to be remembered. Pumpkin spice is a mix of spices, usually including some combination of cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, allspice, and cloves. Food and Wine Magazine notes says the name implies pumpkin spice refers to a blend of spices that was used to flavor pumpkin pie. Most of those spices, however were well known in Europe before Europe had ever heard of a pumpkin. In fact, the spices of pumpkin spice were driving commerce as well as history and culture long before it came from a Starbucks drive through Dr. Carl Lewis, a PhD in systematic botany, writes on the website of Fairchild Tropical Botanic Garden, Because spices occupy a small space in the supermarket and in our kitchen cabinets, we often overlook their importance in shaping the modern world. It's hard to comprehend the centuries of exploration, conquest, slavery, and war that brought these products to our shelves, and it's impossible to estimate the number of lives and fortunes that were risked and lost along the way. Spices are among the first commercial products to be traded over long distances. For example, in his explanation of the phenomenon driven by the introduction of Starbucks Pumpkin Spice Latte, or PSL, in 2003, Starbucks executive Peter Dukes uses as evidence that by the 2010s, everything from pumpkin spice scented candles to pumpkin spice ham were in the marketplace. And that's interesting, because these two things were definitely from the before pumpkin spice latte era. Take cinnamon, the dried inner bark of a genus of trees indigenous to Southeast Asia. The McCormick Spice Institute explains that the botanical name cinnamomum derives from the Hebraic and Arabic term amomum, meaning fragrant spice plant. Perhaps because it's so aromatic, the Institute notes that cinnamon was one of the first known spices, and the website myspicer.com notes that cinnamon is considered to be one of the first traded spices in the ancient world that was, at one time, considered so valuable that it was equal in worth to gold and ivory. A 2015 article in the journal Pharmacognosy Research writes that use of cinnamon can be dated back to almost 2800 BC. The spice is mentioned in the Bible, was used by ancient Egyptians, Chinese, and Romans. Its aromatic properties are important. There's disagreement over exactly where the candle was first invented, but one contender is India, where the website History of Lighting notes around 200 BC they were made from wax that was a residue of boiling cinnamon. The website of candle maker Lucky King New Zealand notes of these candles, these were probably the first candles to give off a pleasant smell when burning, as compared to the other widely used methods of making candle wax. That is, the scented candle that Dukes uses as evidence of a pumpkin spice phenomenon in 2010 might actually have been invented some 22 centuries before pumpkin spice latte. In fact, the first scented candles, and maybe the very first candles ever invented, might have smelled of pumpkin spice. And while Dukes mentions pumpkin spiced ham as evidence of how PSL started a phenomenon, in a review of pumpkin spice spam, Food and Wine magazine notes, of course, these very spices are often used in pork preparation. So while pumpkin spice spam is eye-catching, it's certainly not unprecedented. In fact, I'll go as far as saying that it is the one oddball pumpkin spice product that actually makes a lot of sense. Historian and food blogger Ellie Murphy notes a 14th century French recipe called Soutil Brouet d'Angleterre, or subtle English broth, from the cookbook Le Viande de Talavant, sometimes attributed to the master cook to Charles V of France. On her website, the past is a foreign pantry. The broth made from pork liver included ground ginger, cinnamon, cloves, long pepper, ground grains of paradise, galangal paste, and saffron. And the chef and food historian Marco Gavio de Ruby noted on his website, Historical Italian Cooking, that a recipe for pork brotetum in the 15th century cookbook Registrum Coquin by Johann Brockenheim uses saffron and sweet spices, which usually meant ginger, cinnamon, cloves, nutmeg, and Indian bay leaves. And all that is to say that pumpkin spice ham predated PSL by at least 700-ish years. 
Dr. Lewis writes that there is archaeological evidence that cloves, the dried flower buds of Cisium aromaticum, made their way from the Spice Islands to world markets in ancient times. Like many other spices, he writes, they appear to have reached India by 1700 BC and southern Europe by the first century AD. The doctor notes that the story of cloves is especially colorful, involving a complex secret system of trade that lasted for thousands of years. McCormick writes that cloves were extremely costly and played an important part in world history. Wars were fought to secure exclusive rights to the profitable clove business. And for many years, the Molucas Islands, which were part of the Dutch East Indies and the Dutch government, sought to control their monopoly by destroying every clove tree that grew anywhere else. However, by the early 1800s, the French established a smuggling operation to transport clove tree seedlings to the islands of Zanzibar and Pemba. The cultivation of cloves became so important to Zanzibar that they were called the Black Gold of Zanzibar. And when the Indian Ocean Archipelago fell under the Sultanate of Oman, the website of Sabubu Safaris writes, as Zanzibar's spice trade flourished, it unfortunately became deeply entangled in the abhorrent practice of the African slave trade. The demand for labor to work on the spice plantations, along with the growing needs of the Indian Ocean slave markets, led to the rise of a thriving slave trade in the region. Cloves and cinnamon were part of an important spice mix, traditional Chinese five spices, important both in Chinese cuisine and in Chinese medicine as early as three millennia before the introduction of pumpkin spice latte. There is archaeological evidence that nutmeg, the seed of the fruit which grows on the evergreen nutmeg tree in Mysterica fragrans, originally native to Indonesia, was used in cooking some 3,500 years ago. The spice spread through India and the Muslim world before arriving in Europe by the 12th century. MySpicer.com writes that nutmeg is considered to be one of the most tragic spices in history. Bloody wars have been waged over the control of the spice, and many have died in an attempt to gain control of its production. Nutmeg was so valuable that in the 1667 Treaty of Breda, the Dutch Republic traded the North American colony of New Amsterdam to the British in exchange for the nutmeg-producing Indonesian island of Palaran. This trade, where the island that we now call Manhattan was literally traded for nutmeg, is called the Manhattan Transfer. Ginger, which is often called a root, but is actually part of the stem of the Zingiber officinale plant, was used in China by at least 4,000 years ago. Carried to Europe in Roman times, the National Institutes of Health explains that in the 13th and 14th centuries, the value of a pound of ginger was equivalent to the cost of a sheep. These spices were so valuable that traders often kept their origins secret and maintained trading monopolies for hundreds of years. As Europeans discovered these islands, they fought over monopolies of their own, and their cultivation often drove war, a slave trade, and violent efforts to protect monopolies. It was the desire to develop a western route to the Spice Islands that prompted the Columbus expedition, and thus inadvertently the European discovery of the New World. There, Europeans discovered allspice, derived from the dried berries of the pimenta dioca tree, which is native to the Caribbean and Central America. The spice, which carries flavors of cinnamon, cloves, and nutmeg, had been used for centuries by the Mayans, not just to flavor food, but also as an embalming agent. And it was Columbus's accidental discovery while searching for the Spice Islands that also brought Europe both pumpkins and coffee. Later, merchants from the British colonies of the New World entered the spice trade in the late 17th century. The University of California at Los Angeles notes that competitive sailing boats helped make Salem the capital of spices in the first half of the 19th century. A certain Elihu Yale, who was born in 1649 in Boston, made his fortune as a spice merchant in India. He gave material support from his family home in Wales to help build up the institution that would become Yale University. This was somewhat ironic in that Yale's in Connecticut, which is nicknamed the Nutmeg State. Comically, that's not because Connecticut has ever produced nutmeg, but as a sign of the cleverness of Connecticuters, because enterprising merchants were able to sell fake nutmegs made of wood to unsuspecting purchasers who valued the spice. And despite pumpkin being a new world discovery that was a staple food of Native Americans, the pumpkin pie is thought to have been invented in Europe by French chef Francois-Pierre Laverne, whose recipe for a pompian tort, complete with a pastry crust, dates to around 1650, but the only spice listed was salt. By 1796, American cookery by Amelia Simons included a recipe with ginger and nutmeg, and it was in the 1930s that Food & Wine magazine writes, spice manufacturing companies like Thompson & Taylor Spice Company and McCormick and & Company came up with a revolutionary product, pumpkin pie spice, a pre-blended mix that meant bakers could buy one spice instead of several. But of course, the modern phenomenon is much newer. 
Starbucks first introduced pumpkin spice latte in 2003. Food and Wine Magazine notes, of course, that it is important to distinguish between the two eras, before PSL and after PSL. And that is while pumpkin spice is nothing new, pumpkin spice latte seems to have changed the game. Starbucks explained on its website in 2023 that 20 years ago, pumpkin spice and fall hadn't even found each other yet. The website quotes insider Peter Dukes, who in 2003 led the Starbucks espresso beverage team. We started with a huge brainstorm list and filled the wall with ideas. We probably had at least 100 ideas up on the wall. Pumpkin spice was on the list, but a written survey of customers showed more traditional coffee flavors like chocolate and caramel were favored. But pumpkin spice was kept on a short list because it rated well on uniqueness. And after refining the recipe, pumpkin spice rose as a clear winner in taste tests. The new beverage was then tested in 100 stores and two markets in 2003. And Duke says, within the first week of the market test, we knew we had a winner. And despite some calls to switch it up, the company has continued to bring back the PSL as part of their annual fall menu. Duke's credits much of the success of the product to the rise of social media. And a success it has been. Last year, Starbucks was not able to provide an exact number of pumpkin spice lattes that had been sold, but told Forbes magazine that it was hundreds of millions. Now, before I go any further, I think it's important to acknowledge that not everybody appreciates pumpkin spice season. As columnist Susie Fleming Leonard opined on Florida Today in 2020, I don't like pumpkin spice. It's icky and tastes like a candle. There I said it. Go ahead and snooze me on Facebook and take me off your Christmas card list. To support her position, she quotes a local Floridian that pumpkin spice tastes like nutmeg and lies. And notes that many readers comment that they have other preferences for the taste of fall, including apple cider, chili, and bourbon. The dislike may not be entirely a distaste for the spice combination. Some simply get pumpkin spice fatigue. The website of marketing firm System One, for example, notes that previous to 2023, the Starbucks fall menu did not launch until September, and since then, the pumpkin spice season is increasingly encroaching on summer. Whereas market research firm HAI notes the expansion of the pumpkin spice phenomenon to all manner of products. PSL has morphed from a beverage into a lifestyle, from cough drops to salsa, deodorant to detail spray. Pumpkin spice has infiltrated nearly all commercial arenas and to polarizing results. Noting, for example, a pumpkin spice latte hamburger that a reviewer described as a grim experience that resembled a meat-flavored cupcake. Although they also note a favorable review of pumpkin spice spam. But the truly divisive nature of pumpkin spice becomes even more obvious in polling by the public opinion firm Public Opinion Strategies, which shows a clear political component to the reaction to the mixed spice. In the contest between these two pungent personalities, their website notes, Americans appear to make their decision along political lines. The results of their 2017 survey are published under the intriguing title, The Politics of Pumpkin. In a polling comparison of the preference for pumpkin versus maple as a favorite fall food and beverage flavor, the firm finds that Republicans prefer pumpkin 2 to 1 over maple, 28% to 14%, whereas Democrats are nearly evenly split at 24% to 22%. Self-described independents, however, actually prefer maple by a slight margin. Notably, however, more than half, 51%, the firm writes, prefer neither pumpkin spice nor maple. And that alone might be a statement about the general political feeling in the nation today. But love it or despise it, the blend of spices called pumpkin spice is a true phenomenon. Last year, the database-driven market research firm Nelson IQ estimated the market for pumpkin spice at $802 million dollars. And marketing firm Stagwell, in a survey of 1,000 U.S. adults, found that while a third think that pumpkin spice is overrated, nearly twice that percentage think that the attention paid to pumpkin spice is just right. And thus this story of pumpkin spice, which bought the island of Manhattan and funded Yale University. Wars have been fought over it. Fortunes have been won and lost selling it. Empires have risen and fallen because of it. And entire continents were discovered seeking it. And untold numbers of people have been killed and enslaved to protect a secret that was once considered to be, and I guess you could say is again now thought to be, as valuable as gold. Now sold seasonally in your coffee with whipped cream. But why is it so popular? Well, in 2021, researchers at Johns Hopkins University argued that the smell was key, with researcher Sarah Cornea writing that smells can tap memories more powerfully than any other sense. 
In fact, the researchers say that even reading smell-related words like pumpkin spice elicits a psychological response. And that might explain why some non-food items like pumpkin spice scented candles or self or even a brand of pumpkin spice scented pomade have joined the pumpkin spice phenomenon along with food items, not just pumpkin spice latte, but some which kind of make sense like pumpkin spice flavored Oreo cookies and others which don't seem to like pumpkin spice flavored ramen. And there's a question about, you know, how much is too much? A 2023 issue of Psychology Today noted that scarcity might be as important as taste. Once something is described as in limited supply or seasonal or for a short time only, they say, social psychologist tells us that its desirability increases. So what do you think of this controversy? Do you love pumpkin spice season or do you hate it? Is August 22nd too early or not early enough? Let us know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of The History Guy, and if you did, please feel free to like and subscribe and share The History Guy with your friends. And if you also believe that history deserves to be remembered, then you can support The History Guy as a member on YouTube, a supporter on our community and locals, or as a patron on Patreon. You can also check out our great merchandise shop or book a special message from The History Guy on Cameo.